Hey everybody, Kip Walsky here, checking out a little more hashtag Star Trek Discovery Discussions videos. Today, of course, we're going to be talking about Terra Firma Part 1 and Terra Firma Part 2. So, I think it's safe to say that leading into Part 1 of Terra Firma, most of my theories were kind of wrong. <laughs> you know, but that's kind of the price we pay for the theory game. But, uh, you know, and it's kind of a good thing when you think about it. This season has been very, very difficult to kind of predict what's going to happen. It also makes sense why we didn't get a whole lot of footage kind of after episode six-ish from all the different trailers that were released for Star Trek Discovery because they didn't want to release the fact that, number one, that George Joe is no longer on the show anymore, and number two, that they had any kind of glimpse into the Mirror Universe again. So they did a good job keeping that under wraps. I was very surprised when she arrived in the Mirror Universe. I, you know, for part one, I think most people kind of were surprised as well. I, obviously now in hindsight, Terra, Firma, Terra, and Terra, of course, that makes sense. Of course, those things are connected. But at the time, I wasn't making any of those theories. And I know there wasn't a lot of other people making those theories. In fact, I don't think anybody was making that theory. Of course, there's going to be somebody in the comments below saying, I thought of it, actually, and nobody listened to me. So I, I, I applaud the show for keeping that under wraps and to actually provide us with a genuine, like, like really just reveal moment, kind of like, oh my gosh, like kind of moment. I thought it was very effective. I thought it worked. Uh, I thought the reveal was very well done. Going into part two of Terra Firma, a lot of my theories were accurate. And honestly, the only two things that I got wrong were being able to see Lorca and then where Giorgio was going to end up after she actually walked through the Guardian of Forever. And honestly... I feel like may there have been some issues with COVID or trying to get Jason Isaacs over there because of, you know, the lockdowns and trying to get people over from the UK or from California into Canada or whatever it was, you know, wherever he's at nowadays. And maybe that was causing some of the issues and maybe that kind of also compounds some of the issues with trying to get Anson Mount or Ethan Peck or somebody like that available or even Shazad Latif available to do like a little bit of a, a, a cameo appearance there. But clearly this was intended to be a backdoor pilot for Section 31, which I think it was rather effective at doing that. She's clearly going back to the the TOS time period with which the original first season of Discovery and season two of Discovery was taking place. So that's clearly where she's headed. She's going to go meet up with her Section 31 show buddies, and they're going to go off and gallivant around the universe, kicking the shit out of people wearing black tight leather, I'm sure. And yeah, I mean, the, the theories for part two were pretty much on the money for me, uh, which is, again, kind of like eh, hit or miss, you know, once you kind of get enough information, it's real easy to kind of guess where they're going to go. But uh, as of right now, kind of, you know, saying that I have no idea where we're going for the rest of the season. I hopefully will get some more information about the burn. But honestly, I, I really don't know. And the preview clips and stuff like that really don't help out at all. But anyways, more about Terra Firma. Ultimately, I am somebody who loves a what if story. I love what if stories. What if this? What if they did that? And they kind of just twist it a little bit. And they suddenly show you an alternate timeline of what if this happened? I love what ifs. I think they're really, really fun. I like seeing the same timeline of events, of series events, play out from other angles. I like seeing things like a small change and having these larger effects on the larger universe and seeing all these what-if scenarios playing out. You know, I, I am a sucker for that stuff. So I was kind of hoping a little bit for, kind of hoping against hope that we were actually going to get to see Giorgio inside the mirror universe kind of ghost of Christmas past, you know, vision that she was stuck in really play out, like really go super far into the future and kind of showcase a very long-term lesson for her. And maybe like actually literally do a Ghost of Christmas past, present, and future. I think that would have actually been kind of a little bit more fun. And especially since the episodes came out around Christmas time slash the holidays, it would have actually been pretty good. But anyways, they didn't know that at the time when they were writing them. It was supposed to come out much earlier. I understand that. But yeah, I, I wish we had kind of seen a little bit more of those things kind of play out because ultimately all that really happened, we spent an enormous amount of time in part two with Giorgio attempting to, you know, I guess, turn Michael Burnham over to her side. But ultimately, I mean, I was not surprised that she turned on her immediately afterwards, and nor was she as a character. I don't think most of the general viewing audience would have been surprised either. So it, I don't know, it kind of felt like it just kind of fell flat a little bit. I mean, I guess that she kind of learned a lesson because she helped, you know, Mirror Saru slash Kelpian Man to kind of, you know, get past the Vaharai and all that stuff. And she attempted to save Michael Burnham, which was showcasing that she had grown as a person. And I understand the lesson. I just wish we had kind of experienced a little bit more of the consequences of her making those small decisions play out a little bit more. And even the Guardian at the end makes some kind of allusion to the fact that 
because she was there and she did do that, that that now that timeline, that parallel timeline also exists. So there's a parallel timeline where, you know, I, perhaps the Kelpians will rise up and, you know, become these, you know, great beings inside of the mirror universe, the mirror, mirror universe. I don't know. But uh, I don't know. We'll see what happens if they ever actually go back to this alternate mirror universe. Maybe there's uh, the, the Kelpian mirror universe. I don't know how they were going to how they're going to shake it out. But yeah, it, it was ultimately the episodes. They were just they were just OK. Like they were just acceptable. Like they've kind of followed the numbers. We knew that at some point during the season, they'd have to get Giorgio back in time because of the Section 31 show, which ultimately kind of just spoiled it a little bit for what was going on with her character and I'm sure they probably in hindsight wish they had never said anything about the section 31 show because it definitely kind of would have been a much better like tease of like okay well where's she gonna go and kind of let us you know theorize about what she was gonna go do but now we know she's gonna go do the dang on show so it it was just acceptable like it was just kind of follow the numbers especially sec part two really just followed the numbers and ultimately we got nowhere with the burn again uh, we kind of got this, you know, Emerald Chain technology that's connected to the Discovery, and they're concerned about that, which clearly is going to come into play because the Discovery is going to jump to where that, you know, Kelpian science ship is. There's probably going to be something to do with some kind of a massive amount of dilithium. The Emerald Chain is going to show up, and they're going to be like, give us the dilithium, and it's going to be potentially a big fight. Hopefully not, but we'll see. So obviously they're leading up to that, but we really got nowhere again with the burn and really the other plot points and... Yeah, I mean, it, it is what it is. And I, I did enjoy, again, all of our characters playing their Mirror Universe selves. I, I know some people complain about Michael Burnham being a bit over the top. I like that. I think it's great for the Mirror Universe. I think it's perfect. She's super ridiculous and super cartoonish, you know, very mustache twirling, over the top. I thought it was great. Uh, and I, and that goes for really all of the other characters that played their Mirror Universe versions of themselves, including all of our Arium got back to, which was really great. You know, both actresses that played Arium originally are back there now, and, and that was really great. Although I think one of them did die in this episode, but that's okay. Uh, you know, so it's, you know, it's all good. You know, I, I it, it's, it's just a good episode. It was solid. It was acceptable. It, like, got done what it needed to do, which is to tell another story in the mirror universe so they could use those props again. And then also basically just kind of, you know, give Giorgio the lessons so that she could get back in time and they could resolve that whole thing. I feel like ultimately these episodes didn't really hit as hard as they would want it to have done because they probably spent an enormous amount of time, energy, effort, and money to get this two-parter together and do it this way. And they wrote it as best as they could, but ultimately it just didn't, I don't know, I just didn't really feel like that slam hit at the end there when he revealed that he was the Guardian. He was clearly the Guardian, especially, you know, when she came back. It was very obvious he wasn't a Q, he was clearly going to be the Guardian, you know, and, and I don't know, it just, it didn't fall flat. Falling flat makes it sound like it was really bad. It just was just acceptable, like it was just good enough. Like it was like, all right, well, that was something. But I felt like in terms of what their intentions were, it didn't necessarily meet their expectations of how awesome people were going to find it. I'm looking around online, kind of seeing other people's reactions to it. Some people, have, I mean, you're always going to have the negative folks, but most people are kind of like, cool, Mirror Universe stuff, that's great, but, you know, I'm still kind of worried about what's going on with the burn, and we don't really have a lot of answers with that. So, ultimately, both episodes, I think, as a two-parter, worked very effectively. I thought that the sphere data was implemented very well. I thought that the Guardian of Forever did his perfect job. I liked the fact that it was this person, you know. I thought that was fine. Ultimately, again, the episode was just fine. Like, it was acceptable. It was good enough. You know, it was... I, 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 I'm like, okay, like, that's great. You know, I feel like if they wanted it to be more impactful from my perspective, they should have shown more of the future that Giorgio had created and the long-term ramifications, you know, again, really leaning into that Ghost of Christmas future construct of like, you made this one, two or three minus changes, and this is the effect of you doing the right thing. And then that would have been the lessons that she learned as opposed to, well, you helped that Kelpian and you kind of tried to save Michael, even though you had to kill her anyways, and the Kelpian's probably going to die regardless because this is the mirror universe and not everyone's just going to let the Kelpians run free. So ultimately it had really no impact at all. So I don't know. That's how I feel about it. Anyways, guys and gals, that does wrap up my kind of just review discussion on Terraforma Part 1 and 2. I am, of course, very eager to hear what you guys and gals thought about it. Get your comments up down below. And while you're down there, if you enjoyed this video, please throw a like and a subscribe up on the channel if you're not already. That way you can stay up to date with all the latest Star Trek news, reviews, movie info, and much, much more in relation to the Star Trek universe. And I look forward to getting the conversation started. Live long and prosper, my tricky!